G'day folks, Troy Dean here and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation Podcast. My feature guest this week is my good friend Brian Castle, all the way from the east coast of the United States of America. Hey Brian, how you doing? Hey Troy, how's it going? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, for those uh, off camera, what's happened is we've been through a whole bunch of technical issues this morning, so I want to publicly thank Brian for your patience and your understanding while we've been solving these issues. No worries. I totally know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, as the show rolls on. Now, for those who've been living under a rock for the last 10 years, who is Brian Castle and why might you be on this podcast talking with us? Uh, yeah. So let's see. These days, I am sort of, uh, I consider myself more of like a full stack product designer. Um, so I design software and I, I now uh, develop and, and code the products that I, that I do. The latest one, the one that I'm working on this year is called Process Kit. It's a, uh, it's a tool for agencies um, to automate your processes and those repeatable projects with your team. Um, so that is rolling out now to, uh, to the first uh, batch of users and customers. Um, in, for the last couple of years, I've sort of uh, become known in these circles for the concept of productized services. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work in that over the, over the last several years. I run a productized service company called Audience Ops. Um, really, I should say that the team runs that because I'm I'm very much freed up from that at this point. I'm focusing more on uh, designing software products, but uh, but that is a team that that does a uh, a done for you blog content as a service. Um, we also now do podcasting as well, and and uh, that's been you know doing doing really great, working with a lot of great clients, and we've got a really solid, uh, very talented team doing content over there. Um, and then before that. I like to, I tend to like to work backwards on these questions, you know. So so before all that, uh, I ran a business called Restaurant Engine, which was a uh, a web design service, web design builder for the restaurant industry, all built on WordPress on, on WordPress multi-site, and I uh, had a had a team there that was running that. I, I bootstrapped that and worked on that for a few years and exited that business in 2015, um, sold that business, and then that's when I started. Uh, audience ops and somewhere somewhere in in all those years there i uh i launched the productize course and community for for folks like us who are creating um, agencies and moving into that productized service model and really looking to scale up or or to remove themselves and have more freedom to work on the next business or the next thing um, or have more time with your family um which i certainly want and, and i love to travel and and you know go go around different places so um yeah, and in between all that kind of stuff, I, I also host a couple podcasts too. <laughs> awesome, busy, busy man. Uh, I first came across you uh, as when you were involved in Restaurant Engine because I was exploring the whole recurring revenue movement and I went deep down that rabbit hole. And we now, in our community now, there's this thing that's kind of sprung up called Website as a Service, WAS, W-A-A-S, that sprung up over the last few years. Matthew Radella has been one of our members who's really pioneered that space. He does a basically a website as a service for um, IT service business owners. So if, if you're in the business of servicing computers and um, basically computer repair shops and you need a website, uh, a lot of these guys try and do their own website and Matthew's put a solution together which is basically a website as a service. But you, you were really doing this before before website as a service was even a thing and that with, with Restaurant Engine. And it was, around, it was around about the same time, and I don't know if you were aware of this, but it was around about the same time that uh, the guys over at Human Made were doing something very similar in the restaurant yep. space. Was that yeah. was that just a, yeah, a pure coincidence? Yeah. yeah, how did the restaurant niche come about? Was that just pure, purely coincidental, or did you see an opportunity? Um, yeah, so I mean, I wasn't very close uh, friends with those guys, uh, but I I think I was aware of them, or maybe I became aware of them when I started getting into the into the restaurant space a little bit. Um, but the way that I landed on restaurants was, to be honest, kind of random um, because the the initial thought was because uh, I was coming from a background as a freelance web designer doing a lot of work with WordPress. And so my thought was, okay, if, and, and I had uh, also previously launched a WordPress themes company, which was called Theme Jam. I, I also no longer own that business, mm. but um, uh, so the idea was if, if I could sell themes or set up people's websites, but a hosted version of that, um, where 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 I can build in the the hosting the the domain the the theme a bunch of plugins and, and just kind of get them all set up with all the things that they would need um, that was my my 
concept of how I can move into a SaaS or a, a subscription recurring revenue business away from the, the one-time digital downloads or away from the client work, right? Mm. Um, but then, then the next thought that I had was, okay, well, if I'm offering this as a hosted service where anybody can create a website, the options are going to be insane because every website is completely different and everyone's going to have different needs. We're going to have to build in a ton of customization options and whatnot. That seemed like a mountain that I just couldn't climb. So, um, so then the thought was like, well, how can we make every website the same? Well, if we focus on a niche industry, then they basically just need the same features. So at that point, I started to literally make a list in my notebook of what are what are uh, you know some some in industries that that it's a it's a large market they are reliant on their website for their business um, that I could build and I made a list of maybe twenty different things like restaurants doctors doctors offices like hotels car dealerships um, I don't know <laughs> a bunch of other ones and I sort of just randomly chose restaurants because I thought that a as we all know restaurant websites are, are terrible still to this day. Um, uh, and I, and I thought that, uh, I could easily offer an improved, uh, solution for, you know, just I, all I really needed was a couple of hundred restaurants to sign up. And that's a, that's a pretty sustainable bootstrapped little business there. Um, so that's what I did. And, and, uh, I kind of randomly got into it. And then I just went down that rabbit hole of like, how can I reach more and more restaurant owners? And that, and that's how I started to, um, get into things like doing content marketing and blogging and social media and email newsletters. And mm. then over those years, I, uh, we did pretty well with that. So we got on the front page of Google for all the right terms and that helped grow, grow that business. Um, but I also in the process figured out the process for hiring writers <laughs> and building a system where they are running our content marketing arm without me having to write or come up with ideas or anything like that. And so by the time I sold the business in 2015, I was looking around for ideas um, for the next business. And I heard from my friends who run other SaaS companies that they have a hard time hiring writers and mm. figuring out that whole content marketing thing. And that, that's where it sort of clicked, where it was like, well, I could offer that as a done for you productized service. And, and as it turned out, that grew, I don't know five times, 10 times faster than wow. in, in like the first three months than like restaurant engine did in four years. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. It's a, it's a big problem to solve the content marketing thing. And I do want to talk about that in a moment because there's a bunch of places where you can go and hire writers, but I want to talk about the difference between audience ops and a marketplace of writers. But before we get there, what, just for those who, who are listening, who might not be aware of the nuances, what's the difference between a product and a service in your mind? Yeah, so the way that most people think about it is a product um, can be any number of things. I mean, it could be a, literally a physical product that you buy at a store or that you order off of Amazon. Um, in our world here on the internet, it tends to be software products. Um, so uh, if you think of WordPress themes, those are like downloadable digital files that you literally download and usually you pay once for them. Um, but more commonly today is software as a service, so subscription software that you pay monthly or, or annually for and, and we all know you know thousands of, of examples of that mm. um, uh, service on the other hand would be people whether it's one person one consultant working directly with a client or a team like an agency where you have multiple people maybe designers developers writers illustrators what have you um, all coming together to execute a project consult offer strategy work directly with talk on the phone talk over email meet in person doing doing things manually and delivering services um, but where I, where I got into, and I, I, and I did that for a long time. I was mm. a freelance web designer before that I worked at web design agencies, um, in New York. So, um, I knew that world really well, but the client services world and I, uh, uh, what led me to get into restaurant engine and then into audience ops and, and the productized course and everything was this, um, this itch that I started to have a few years into freelancing where, where I was like, you know, it's nice to be able to work from home and, and stuff and kind of make my own hours, but dealing with clients every day, especially as a solo freelancer, that, that started to get to me mm. a little bit. Some, some clients were great, but a lot of clients were just difficult to deal with. And I kind of felt like I had 
you know, I, I, I didn't feel like I was my own boss. I felt like I had like 20 different bosses, my, <laughs> my clients, you know? Yep. Um, and, um, and, you know, I was constantly stuck at my computer doing all the work myself. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really take vacations or if I did, I was taking a pay cut because I wasn't working that week. Yeah. Or you're taking um, your laptop on holiday with you and, you know, logging in yeah. by the pool and fixing things while the kids are in the pool, you know, having a great time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's what um, really drove me toward trying to do products, um, restaurant engine, WordPress themes, digital stuff, uh, software. But what I also learned with that is that it's, it's such a long road, a long bridge to, to, to leap from doing client work, or even if you're an agency into having a sustainable, profitable software business that, so, you know, people call it the long uh, SaaS ramp of death because yeah. it just takes so long yeah. to, to get up to a sustainable revenue level. Um, and so what I found the, the shortcut to that was this idea of productized services where I could take a service that I had been offering and make it a much more focused, a much more packaged solution with a, with a set price and a set scope um, designed for a very specific type of customer, marketed in a certain way, it, it literally marketed, marketed and sold like a product and not like a service. You know, um, so with services, the common thing is you create proposals and maybe you have a little negotiation over what the what the number of hours of the estimate or the or the quote is going to be, and you go back and forth, and it's kind of stressful for both sides. Whereas selling a productized service is here's the problem we solve it in this way that we we really know this problem we we've we've designed this solution just for that we we've, we've packaged a set of services to solve that problem we're pricing it at this level we do it on this sort of timeline if you resonate with this problem if you are the person that we identify with then you can you can sign sign up right here and and get that problem solved or mm. you can go for something a little bit more custom and and that's not to say that the work that we deliver isn't original or isn't custom to every client, but the way that we deliver it is yeah. highly process oriented. Yep. The thing I love about this <clears throat> is, and I used Restaurant Engine as a case study when I was talking about recurring revenue. This is, I don't know, five years ago, five or six years ago, I was running recurring revenue roadmap workshops around uh, the country. And uh, the thing that I talk about and still talk about a lot, the difference in my mind between a between client services and offering a productized version of that service is the product version of it removes all of the waste out of the transaction. So all of the back and forth with the client, all the design revisions, all of the arguing over, you know, which plugins we're going to use and the way that we're going to do this. And, uh, you know, clients micromanaging the process, I think happens because, Ultimately, it comes down to a lack of trust. If the client doesn't trust you or your team to deliver, they try and micromanage you through the process. And the clients are not qualified to micromanage you through the process. Otherwise, they wouldn't have hired you in the first place. If they could do it themselves, they wouldn't have hired you. But they, typically speaking, they hire you and then they try to micromanage you through the process because they don't trust you. And this is what I love about productized services is that it removes all of that. It's like, well, here it is. You can buy it or not. And it's okay if you don't, but you can't buy it and then change it. You buy it as is. It's a product off the shelf. You don't get on yeah. a plane to fly from... New York to California, and then ask them to go via Toronto. That's not the flight path, sorry. It's not, we're geared up right. to go direct from New York to LAX. It's going to take five hours. We know how it works. Everyone's on board, and away we go. We're not going to change our mind halfway through the process. What yeah, that's that, that's right. And, and I mean, you know, it, it can sound like it's a very rigid thing, and, and there aren't um, parameters where we can um, tailor the service, but um, we do have a very set process and schedule of delivery. Like, like one thing in audience ops is like, we just don't do rush jobs. Mm. You know, we've had people ask like, well, can I get my article by the end of this week instead of like, we, we take four weeks to onboard you and do a research process and everything. Mm. And we do have revisions too. We, we can make revisions, but we have a process for how we, how we accept your edit requests. And then we'll, we'll make those, those, those revisions and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, going back to something you said about it, you know, the transaction, um, what I found is it really makes it easier on both sides of, of that transaction, both to sell a productized service and, and for the client to buy it, you know, because if you're like most of us, I was in this, in this world too, where, um, 
new client knocks on your door, sends you an email, whatever, you know, you have a, a discovery call to figure out what they want, what they need. Maybe they don't really know what they want. Maybe they think they know what they want, but they don't really know what they're talking about. Like we've, we've been through all that. And, um, and then you go and back and you create a custom proposal and that takes hours and then you send that off and then you get some pushback or some questions about it. And, 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 and you know, you go back and forth. And so for, for, to sell that, it, it's a lot of work up front, and you don't even know if you're going to win the project or not. For the client, it's a lot of time and sometimes frustration because they're like, all right, well, you're telling me it's going to be hundreds of hours, but at the end of the day, how much am I going to end up paying you? And when will I get, when am I going to get my new website or whatever it is? To a productized service, it's we're doing marketing, we're getting leads, and anybody who wants to sign up can, can buy at any time. And for the client, they... If, if they're the person that we've identified and, we, and we're marketing to them, they're, they're either going to read our, our copy or, or hear our marketing or hear somebody speak and say, yes, that, you've identified the problem and, 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 you, and like, I trust that since you know my problem so well, you must know the solution. Correct. Really, you know. Yeah. And uh, in, in the interest of complete transparency, I think it's okay to publicly announce now that we have actually hired audience ops to help us with our content for a number of reasons. The main reason, though, is not only because we hung out together recently in Santa Monica at our fantastic event, if I do say so myself, and I actually just I actually just really like you and I want to be around you more because I think you're a good operator. Apart from that, the one, the, one of the problems that we've got at the moment is that Producing our own content, which we've been doing in-house for years, consumes so much admin overhead and so much of our resources because the nature of our, our business has been that we haven't had the time to sit down and spend a couple of weeks designing a really lean process for producing content that brings in organic leads we, it's just evolved over time and everyone's been really busy you know keeping up spinning the wheels getting the content published because it's on the calendar so i come across someone like you who's got this process dialed in and i'm in your onboarding process at the moment and i'm 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 watching it uh, as a consumer as a client but also watching it as a product designer and it's identifying where you've answered m most of the questions you're answering up front before we even get on a call. So I've, I, I haven't actually had a call with our account manager yet, uh, but I've been through the onboarding and I've filled in all the, the you know, the, the, the forms and I've watched the video. And most of the questions that I would ask on that call have already been answered. And you've made that video and you've designed that on, on ramp once and that will serve you and the business for years to come and hundreds or thousands of clients because you no longer have to sit in a boardroom and answer those questions and basically prove to the client that you can do the job. Sorry, two seconds, two seconds. Max, we're going to need to do an edit here. Sorry, Brian, two seconds. <laughs> I, I, uh, f I forgot to activate my loopback license. <laughs> so the trial has just, um, the trial has just, uh, Given me limitations, so uh, just okay. uh, sorry, Brian. Uh, we're just going to have to edit this, Max. So that is my loop back license there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it? Um, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, two seconds. All right, it's all fine. It's all good. <laughs> oh dear me. Building the runway as the plane takes off. Yes, okay, come on, just take my money and give me the new version loop back. Come on, you're killing me. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Here we go. Yep, there we go. Fabulous. I'm ticking all the privacy boxes, and yes, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, Brian, bear with me. No worries. We're almost yeah, there. Earlier today, I was, uh, I was renting a, a U-Haul truck here. We're, we're moving some stuff, and... I got through their whole checkout process on my mobile phone only to find that their final checkbox doesn't work on the iPhone. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'd go back to the computer and redo it. It's amazing. It's so annoying, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yes, 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 yes. Pay now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Give me the green tick. Give me the green tick. There we go. Okay, I need to put that code in. Thank you. Oh, gee whiz. There we go. And I need to change that to that, apparently. Okay, there we go. Let's try that. Unlock. Yes, 
confetti. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Now we should be good to continue. Uh, Max. Let's go from you announcing that. Oh, you've just gone to black screen for your edit, right? Is that? Yep. Cool. Okay. So. <clears throat> um, okay. So I think it's okay to announce this publicly, but we have hired Audience Ops to help us with our content for a number of reasons. One, we hung out recently in Santa Monica at our fabulous event, if I do say so myself, and I just really like you as an entrepreneur and we got along really well and we connected and I think you're a very good operator and there's obviously a lot of trust there. But second of all, and I've been saying this for a long time, people trust processes more than they trust people. Because processes make you feel safe, right? You, 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 you walk into a restaurant and the, the, the usual process is somebody greets you, they show you to your seat, they bring you some water, they leave you alone for a couple of minutes to settle in, they then come back and take your drinks order, they go and get your drinks, they bring your drinks, then they take your food order, then they bring the food. This all happens without you even thinking about it. And it is a process and it's very well rehearsed and very well dialed in. What happens if they don't follow the process is that you start to feel uncomfortable and you don't know why, but you start to get nervous about what's going to happen when they bring your food out because it's been, we've been here eight minutes and nobody's brought us our water. They're obviously understaffed. Now I'm not feeling so good. And it's not the people, it's the process that's not being followed. We haven't had the opportunity to sit down, do a stock take, audit our content process and design a lean green content machine. You've you've done that work. You've actually done that and you did that through content marketing for Restaurant Engine. You 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 documented that process and put that process in place. And now you've basically you're basically offering that process driven by creative talent as a product. It's the process that I'm buying really and the talent to drive that process and the trust that I have in your your team's ability to execute on that because you've you've done the heavy lifting now sure we could spend right. a cup we could spend a week and unplug everything and go into the bunker and design that process but I I'm paying for speed of implementation you've already got the process dialed in so um, yeah. I I, th- I think that's what that's what's appealing to me as a business owner and being in your onboarding ramp at the moment, what I've noticed is um, your, your on-ramp at the moment is you've got this great intake form and this great video that explains your process. You only need to make that once, that video once, and the onboard form once, and you can use that to onboard hundreds or thousands of clients for years to come because you're answering the frequently asked questions once and you're answering all those questions in advance. I haven't even had a call with our account manager yet, and I know how you guys work. I know the system. I know the email address to use for revisions. I know how the timelines work because it's all explained in the 10-minute video that I watched, which is yeah. brilliant. That's leverage, and that's what I love about products. Products offer you leverage as a as a business owner and a company, whereas services, it's very hard to get leverage in, in a traditional client services business. Th- that is one of the key things when I'm thinking about a productized service. Really anything that I'm ever working on these days, if I'm working on it, I want to work on it once and have the thing continue to run after I stop working on it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to work on it and then work on it again next month and then again next month. You know, and yeah, the onboarding, that onboarding experience that you're seeing right now, um, we, the team and I have spent a lot of time continuously improving that. It's one of the, by far one of the most important set. We have several processes that are baked into that. Mm. Um, and, and like you said, like, yeah, there, we now have a, a welcome video, which goes into a pretty long welcome form that, that we mm-hmm. gather all the, all the key information from you and everything. Um, I mean, that stuff has gone through so many iterations because it's built off of, things that have come up over the years, you know, like, oh, yeah. it, we, we do need to get their WordPress access in this way and remind them about this plugin. And we, and, and, and then, you know, the, the video is really designed to help our customers be really great clients and get them, get the best value from us. You know, it, we're, we're setting expectations around, um, this is how our revision pro- process goes, like you said, and, mm. and, um, and, and just kind of setting, setting us both up for success, you know, and, and I, I've literally seen, you know, night and day improvements in customer happiness and onboarding and churn and, and all that kind of stuff as a result of, of continuously improving that that process. Now, what I'm curious about here also is this is a bit meta, but you, not only do you leverage 
uh, not only not only do you look at leverage in a business, but you also leverage whatever assets you build in that business to potentially launch the next business. So Restaurant Engine, you develop this great process for content marketing. You leverage that and turn that process into a business called Audience Ops. You then leverage what you learn from Restaurant Engine and Audience Ops to launch Productize. Uh, which is the is it productize.io is that the is that the URL uh, no it's it's actually at productizecourse.com productizecourse.com uh, uh, productizecourse.com yeah. so so what you learn in audience ops and, and restaurant engine you you put into your productize course and community but then the process everything you, you then understand that everything is process driven so you then leverage what you've learned in in all of these ventures to launch process kit which is, yeah. and I'm curious, uh, well, I, I, I'll come back to process in a second, but I'm curious, why did you go down the rabbit hole of actually learning to code the thing yourself? Why didn't you just hire a team of coders to do it? Because there's no leverage that, in that, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, really good question. Um, you know, when you, when you describe it the way that you just did, it sounds so, so neat and well thought <laughs> out and strategic. And as everybody knows, it's never that way no. in, the, in the real world, you know, no, no, no. and it certainly wasn't, wasn't for me. So, so the real story of, of what happened there is, um, I mean, it's true that I, that I do very much try to leverage one business to the next. And that's mainly because I experienced some pain point or some problem hmm. while running one business. And, and, and that that's the spark of an idea of, a, you know, finding a problem solution to base the next business on. Right. Mm. Um, with process kit, there, there was actually a, a product that came before this that was called ops calendar. Hmm. And, um, and that was, I started that maybe two years ago. And that was, that was sort of like what process kit is, but it was a little bit more directly niched down to content marketing. So it was like a process tool, but, but also like an editorial calendar tool, hmm. software based, built very much built around what we've learned building audience ops. And at that time, I did decide to outsource the development for that. I I'm a designer, so so I really like designing the the product and the interface and and the front end stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's my background, so so I'm very comfortable in that world. But when it comes to back end database stuff, I, I did outsource that for the Ops Calendar product. Spent a lot of money. Spent about year and a half having them build it out and and we got some you know some paying customers on it and whatnot got the thing built they they essentially built it to the specs that i had asked for um and and then it got to a point where we needed to upgrade some some underlying code libraries we did that upgrade it broke literally everything in the app wow um and i was looking at the prospect of Ha having to pay those same developers to rebuild literally all the features that we had spent almost two mm. years building. Mm. I didn't have the, the money or the time or interest in doing that. Wow. Um, so, so that's where I sort of stepped back. This, this happened around, that must have been like February 2018 is, is when we hit that wall where mm. it was like, what am I going to do about this product? It, everything broke, you know? Mm. Um, and so what we did was we kind of, paused development we didn't go forward with that upgrade but we froze the feet like we couldn't build new features going forward on this uh, on, based based on the state of the code base and me having not not been a back-end developer i i couldn't really um consult on how to model the databases or you know design the infrastructure or, or choose the, the technologies that they were choosing and mm. they, like i just didn't have that background mm. um and so I stepped back and, and I was like, well, all right. First of all, I'm seeing a little bit of like product market fit issues. Maybe we should focus more on the process and less on the editorial calendar stuff. Um, so if I'm going to rebrand and rebuild this thing anyway, and I do have plenty of time and free, free time freed up from audience ops. I mean, the team runs that. I'm not in the day to day from that. Hmm. Why don't I spend the next year, the rest of 2018, diving into code, learning how to code, and and the reason, like the reason why I was so interested in that idea, was not only coming off of that experience with Ops Calendar and, and wanting to eventually rebuild it into what, what's becoming Process Kit, but just to build that skill set so that I that I do become not just front end but now full stack. So now literally going forward, any idea that I have, and I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I have 
a thousand ideas all the time, yeah. you know? So, uh, uh, now I can literally build something at will, not that it can happen overnight, of course, sure. but I, I could choose to design and build something from start to finish, um, at will. And it took, it took about a year. I mean, of, of course I'm still learning. I'm still, I still consider myself a beginner, but, mm. but I've made so much progress to a point now where I feel like I'm close to professional level on, on developing apps using Ruby on rails. That that's the framework that I, mm -hmm. that I really sunk myself into. Mm. Um, the, um, th so throughout 2018, I did a lot of courses. I did some practice projects end of 2018. This is December. Um, I built my first like real app called sunrise KPI. I spent about six weeks building this little tool cause I wanted this tool for myself, which, um, sends me an email every morning with my key metrics, <laughs> my traffic, my revenue, my, my, uh, email subscribers, hmm. a bunch of other things. Just, it connects to those services, Stripe, Google analytics, convert kit, whatever you're using set, puts all that stuff in an email that I open up every single morning to give me my numbers. Wow. Like that's, that's what I wanted for myself. Um, rather than going out to those individual services and pulling reports. So I was like, well, I'm learning to code and this seems like a pretty small enough project that I can learn to do and build myself. So I did that, launched it. it it's out there now. Sunrisekpi.com has, it, there's a free plan currently. There's a, there, there's a paid plan. Um, but that was a really good experience. And it, and it sort of took me from the, the crossing that bridge from practice projects and learning to here's something real and I can mm. really apply it. So that was sort of a small project, finished it by January. That's when I started. So January, 2019 is when I really dove in headfirst on process kit. And I've been spending, you know, here we are in uh, end of July. Mm. Um, it's been about seven months now, full, full time, every single day working on process kit. Wow. And back in June, so like a month or two ago is when I f began inviting the first users and and first customers to uh, to process kit. I'm envious of that skill set. I, uh, <clears throat> years ago, had a conversation with my wife and I said, I think I'm going to go down the Ruby on Rails rabbit hole and become a, a Ruby on Rails developer because I think it's an important skill to have. Um, she was right. Uh, I don't have the concentration span or the... Um, the, the will to sit in a room on my own and for that long and learn, I just need to be around other people. And it just kind of drove me crazy. And after three or four weeks, I just aborted mission and said, right, that's it. I'm just not going to be a developer. And I'm very envious of that skill because I think it's a very important skill to have. I, I should, I, I want to stop you there because I, I, I really regret not doing this sooner. Mm. You know, I was, I was a front end web designer. I, HTML, CSS really knew that world. Well, yeah, that's where I'm at. WordPress, I, I knew very well. Yeah. Um, but backend database stuff like scared me. I, for yeah. literally Same. 10 plus years there, I was like, I am not, yeah. if it's, if it's command line, if it's database, yeah. that's not me. Yep. I shouldn't be touching that. Yep. To the experts. <laughs> and, and that was fine. I, I, I did a bunch of projects and, and products working with other developers, but, but I always hit that wall where mm. it was like. I either need a bunch of cash to, to hire developers mm. or I need a bunch of time or both. And, mm. and, and that just frustrated me after a while. And, and also as a designer, um, I now really feel like if I'm designing a software, designing the code, the, the modeling, the databases and, and how, how the interactions work, that that's as much part of the design as the, as the button colors yeah. and the fonts, you know, um, and, you know, I, I, I actually believe that the, the product that I'm building now is a much better product inside and out than the one that I hired career developers to do. Not mm. that they were terrible developers um, and, not that I, and certainly not that I'm such a great developer, but since I'm designing it and I, I really know the customer, I'm the one talking to the customer. So I know mm. the solution that the, the way that it needs to work, mm. you know, I, I think that that goes a long way. And if you if you can, if you can carve out the time, I mean, I had, I had a lot of free time and I sort of dedicated myself in 2018 to that's my full time mm -hmm. job is to learn to code. Um, it's certainly possible. Ruby on rails is wonderful. I know it's 2019 
and it's not the hottest, trendiest it's, thing anymore. No, it's not. It's like but, it's all that, it's all that's react. That's kind of what I like and, about it. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's tried and true. It's it's still as active as ever. You right. know, they're on Rails version six now, and um, it's it's still got a worldwide community. There's a ton a ton of resources online. Um, courses, Stack Overflow issues. There's everything that you can ever find. What what you? Um, the other great thing is, is I have a I have a lot of friends who are developers. A lot of them are Ruby developers. So it's been fantastic to be able to you know lean on on friends of mine and, and yeah and bug bug the hell out of them with my code questions. What's your go to resource if you were going to learn Ruby on Rails from scratch? Is it is it the Railscast network? Railscasts was great, but it ended back oh. in 2014 huh. um so you can still access those and, and i do go to those sometimes um but they're a couple of years uh outdated now um uh, i'm a member of uh what, what's it called now uh, sorry let me let me just get this link um it could probably go rails go rails uh, go yeah, GoRails.com is, is fantastic. He sort of, uh, Chris Oliver at GoRails, he sort of like picked up the the torch from, from Railscasts mm -hmm. and, and continues to run with it today. They've got a great Slack community and he's got a huge library of videos mm -hmm. um, that, that teach everything there. The other one that I did very early on was was um, uh, One Month Rails. Uh, which yeah. was like, it's like a 30-day program, but but you, you can burn through it. Like I burned through it in like a week. Yep. Um, and um, that was very helpful for like a total newbie, you know. Um, but I, uh, not to get too deep on a tangent here, I, I also had um, explored a little bit of PHP and Laravel early mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Like, because I came from WordPress, that's PHP. So I was like, let me, let me look at Laravel. And I went through um, Laracasts. And I, for, for me personally, I found it more difficult to take what I learned and then go build my own stuff with Laravel. And that's where I switched to Rails, went through some tutorials there, and I found I had an easier time taking what I learned and running with it and building my own stuff. So. We'll make sure we put those links in the show notes too. So go rails.com and Rails Month, is it? Uh, one month rails. One month I think rails. That's at one month dot com. One month rails and, and go rails. Things. We'll yeah. put those links in the show notes. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, talk to me a little bit about Productize, uh, productizecourse.com. What's the value proposition there, and and what's the uh, what's the who, who are the usual people in that community? Yeah, so you know, getting back to uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about that that itch as a freelancer that I that I had that I know that many other freelancers have, where it's like, all right, been around the block as a freelancer, have had you know some decent clients and you know comfortable enough income, but. I'm kind of tied to my desk doing all the work myself and and kind of getting sick of doing the client treadmill thing, living project to project. That that was sort of the impetus behind um, creating a, a dedicated course and community. And um, and that's, uh, you know, that's set up as, as a one time uh, purchase access to the course. You get lifetime access. You get uh, I think even more value is, is, is the community. We've got a mm. private Slack, private forum. Um, but I, I did create a, 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 a big video course and I've, I've recreated it a, a couple of times. So it's, it's updated now. Um, but it goes into, it's kind of three sections. One is, um, identifying an idea for a productized service and how to, how to form that value proposition, especially if you're coming from a background as a freelancer, how to turn that or, or an agency, how to turn that into a more productized offering. And then a big, a big section in the middle on systems processes, mm -hmm. how, to, how to build out those standard operating procedures, how to hire people and delegate the work, remove yourself from the operation, um, hiring project managers, hiring assistants, all of that. Um, and then a, a bit of marketing. So how to, how to do sales and marketing and, and have a, a, a sales pipeline and managing a CRM and, and onboarding clients and, and all that. 
Awesome. Productizecourse.com is where you can find that. Uh, awesome. Hey, I'm res- respectful of everyone's time, including yours. And this, I could sit here for days and do this, my friend. You know, it's just, this is right in my wheelhouse. Content and, and productizing things has been something I've been talking about for years. And I've been following you and everything you've been doing. And also, Brennan Dunn is another guy I've been following who I know is a friend of yours uh, who's been very vocal ar- around this topic as well. And something it's, that- all, it's all mutual, man. I've been following your stuff for forever. And, and you know, what you've been doing uh, worldwide for, for the community of, of work, WordPress, but I think you've gone beyond that world now with freelancers and agencies. So it's it's been it's been awesome to watch your your operation too. Yeah, it's been a it's been a fun journey. Uh, where can people reach out and say thank you for this and keep in touch? Well, I'm on Twitter at at Cast Jam. Um, my personal site, my I send a newsletter out. Uh, giving people updates that's at briancastle.com you can sort of link to like from from there you'll you'll find links to all, all my other products and things that i'm doing um i also co-host a, a podcast with with my buddy uh, jordan gal that's at bootstrappedweb.com awesome and i just had a memory i think the first time we crossed paths i think you were the first person to review the video user manuals plugin Oh wow! I do I, remember that product. I used. Yeah, it. yeah, I vaguely remember. You might have even made like a video walkthrough review of that plugin or something, and and posted oh, it up, and and I, I found I it, and I'm like, that, but... I'm like, who's who is this Cast Jam dude? And I reached out to you and thanked you, and I think that was the first <laughs> email conversation we had. That was, I don't know, man. That must be close to ten years ago. Wow. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, I remember uh, video uh, user manuals. It, I mean, it's still a thing today, yeah, it right? It sure like, is. Yeah, that's the gateway drug uh, <laughs> for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I forgot Fantastic. what I was using it for. I must have been using it for my client work. Yeah. To, to get clients. You know, yeah, the, and that's I, and that, that's when you had Theme Jam. I, that, I remember following Theme Jam and oh, then yeah. the restaurant engine thing. And then, yeah, it's been a, been a long journey. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, working with you and the team in audience ops and reporting back to our audience on uh, on how that's going. And so if you're if you're on our blog, keep your eyes out over the next few months and, and see uh, how audience ops roll out. And I also look forward to following along the process kit journey to, I think I might have signed up for a, an early invite. So I'm looking forward to diving in there and seeing what you're up to there. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks so much for having me on, Joy. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. All right, gang, that's another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. Uh, get on over to wpelevation.com slash iTunes and subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating and a review. It does help us come up in the search results. And you can also follow us on Facebook and YouTube at all the usual links. I look forward to speaking with you again on the podcast soon. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.